I'm pushing live now. <laughs> got it. Okay, got it. This, this is ask you for the option. Hello, everybody. We are live on Facebook. Um, so typically we do these calls in the group in the Empathy and Ukraine Academy group, but today we thought, let's just share with everyone what you can expect if you, uh, you know, become part of the group. And as I'm doing that, let me also share it into the group and then we'll get that out of the way. And as you guys are hopping on, let me know where you're coming in from as well to see how far uh where where i know you guys from right where you guys are from share now share to a group there we go i don't use my computer very often <laughs> to, to do live video so that's why it takes a little bit longer there we go this one here so we're going to share it live in the group because we typically go live in a group. Those that are waiting in the group, they'll see that we are live there. Okay. So, and that way Bethany can share it too. <laughs> right? And you're muted. That's what I'm doing right now, actually. It'll be quiet. I want to say hi real quick, but then hi. we gotta get started. Hi. All right, go on. <laughs> he loves, hello. Okay, so today, as you guys see, there we go. Let me just open everything so I can see everything set up. There we go. So let's hit record and then we'll get started. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to our podcast, Heal the Unicorn with. Yana Kasparzak and Bethany Briggs, where we talk about everything and anything that I and you and Bethany as a unicorn, as one of a kind individual going through, anything that we are dealing with, anything that is coming up and anything that you bring to us that you want us to cover a topic of. For example, the topic today, um with the gifts that we have that we're born with some of them will mention that you might not fully been aware of that you have at your disposal to live the life that you want and others are the ones that you gotta do a little bit of work and uncovering but first what do you think about my spotlight <laughs> those of you that that have seen the videos this is brand new and i call this co color the unicorn color it's like light uh, in the middle and then darker on the outside so um we'll go right into the topic i guess right and we'll skip the interest for today maybe we'll do them next time where we can yeah you probably know who we are at this point oh. right or check the facebook page but yeah oh. <laughs> check it out. do a little snooping so let's talk about the gifts that we are all born with that we are not aware of or not in control of more more so we know that they're there but we're not consciously aware because we're just so used to these gifts and by not by not um spending the time to master each of these gifts that we're born with and you know mastering them we are denying ourselves living the life that we actually want to live so the first one i'm going to start with is breath mm -hmm. this is something that is a gift because if we did not have our breath we would not be living and it is a gift to be able to breathe okay in breath, some of us are born not having difficulty breathing and others do have difficulty breathing. So they learn from an early age the importance of breath. Whereas the rest of us that are not aware of breath and we can just go 
we, we go by, you know, our daily life every single day, every single week, every single year, and not even being conscious of the one thing we have that helps us to regulate the body in every aspect and to heal the body as well. And when we go without mastering the skill, right? Mm -hmm. So I, um, I heard something in the, one of these really, really great books. And the book is called How to Think Like a Monk by Jay, uh, Jay Shetty. So one of the things that he was saying in the book is um, his experience, his conversation with a 10-year-old monk who had told him that he, that one of, one of the things that we are we have with us, one of the gifts that we have with us, is something that we're born with, and something that you know, you know, we start our life and we end our life, and that is our breath. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to master our breath because when we, uh, when we feel any kind of emotion, we our, our breath changes. So why not start there by mastering this gift that we have all been giving at birth right so bethany what are your thoughts your experiences your knowledge on this one particular gift of breath and then you can jump into other gifts that we're born with that you want to talk about that we are not aware of having so okay um so just writing something down so i can come back to it um so man breath is an amazing gift um because i notice a lot of the times when i am dealing with something that's like an obstacle or i'm feeling like overwhelmed or like stressed out, I notice I'm not breathing properly. I'm breathing in my chest instead of my stomach. Or, you know, I'm not taking those deep nourishing breaths that really help you find your center and your balance. And so like you're saying, everything with the breath, um, it's an amazing gift because even that, if that's the one self-care practice you do for yourself, it's like one of the best ones because it regulates your nervous system. It regulates your mind, it regulates your body. Um, it helps you release as well. Um, so that's, I definitely agree with it being like one of the best gifts or one of the, one of the most empowering gifts, I guess you would say. Um, another gift that I would have to say is also really amazing that we have is our intuition. And like our inner wisdom as well, that inner guru, that inner teacher, because when you really sit down and connect with yourself, you find all these answers that you've had that you haven't been able to answer and you hear answers like on on the internet or you ask someone and they give you an answer, but until you fully connect with it and you really feel that intuition and wisdom, it kind of is like, eh, okay. And I recently had a realization um, with candy where I was eating a lot of candy for Halloween because it was Halloween. So yeah, I enjoyed candy, of course. But in the past, um, I would get munchies really bad. I would eat bags and bags of candy and I'd wake up the next day with a horrible migraine. And I realized that it wasn't necessarily just because I was sick with something. Yes, I was sick with sugar like overload. I was sick with having my brain be so foggy and groggy from the sugar. And that just came about um, with Halloween and me feeling the same thing. So it was that gift of intuition and like learning, also like learning from yourself is a really good gift as well um it's kind of goes along the lines with intuition but it can totally be something else as another gift um using yourself as a teacher um but um what other gifts that we uh, um our creativity 
but we're born with our creativity. And I think the best way to find your creativity is by going after your, your curiosities, trying new things. Um, one thing you taught me was a curiosity list or even a dream list, write these out. And a lot of the time you're going to find your gifts on the, on those pages. Cause I, I remember when I was doing the exercise right before I'm like, I don't know, like, what do you, how am I going to make a whole page? And then it just came out and it's just like page, page, you know, it's just like a full page. Um, and so I think going after your curiosities, you're going to find your gifts and then meditating on it, asking yourself questions and doing the self-assessment behind it, um, while breathing and, um, following your intuition. Yeah. Kind of all goes together in a way too. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, there's, they have that alignment with each other. Yeah. And a lot of the things that you were just talking about, your intuition, your wisdom, um, the creativity, all of that is the brain and the heart. So those are the other, you know, physical gifts that we were born with. So we're born with breath and then we're born with the heart, right? And some people need to be more cautious of how they uh, live their life based on the heart they were born with. And um, what else? The heart, the brain, same thing for the brain, right? And so a few things I jotted down as reminders. Brain needs exercise as well, just like the body. It needs exercise. And it's essentially the same exercise as everybody would do, but it would be a little bit different based on your likes, your dislikes, your curiosities, and things like that. So now that I've mentioned curiosity, that is brain and heart. And the breath changes as well. So when Bethany, you were talking about that list, right? You were writing down that list. Did you notice your breath change with certain things that you had written down? that you were curious about? Honestly, no, but recently I went through the lists and I noticed my breath would change on certain things that I I learned to be my gift now. So if I were to have that, you know, have this knowledge then, I probably would have noticed my breath more, but I had, like I was saying, I did notice when I was over reading through the lists, like my breath did change it was more ah, like deeper breaths and the stuff that I wasn't sure about it was they weren't as deep you know it was kind of like it was just a breath you know I guess it's more of a nourishing breath on the on the other the other things yeah see hearing you say it all I hear in my head is that because I love organizing decluttering as well and that goes with the thoughts and that goes with the things that we are doing and it goes with our curiosities and like Marie Kondo would say if it doesn't spark joy you let it go when it comes to this curiosity list and that's why uh, I'm glad that you mentioned um that you were rereading it, that you were revisiting and you're going over the list. And that is actually the key to paying attention to your breath when it comes to this curiosity list. And the reason why I mention is because, and the reason why I'm even talking about the curiosity list is, you know, going to the other part of the, uh, you know, the conversation today of, you know, we have the gifts that we're born with, and then there's gifts that we can uncover and follow and, they are our passions and we can utilize them in the way that allows us to have the kind of life and the lifestyle most importantly that we dream of living and it starts with your childlike curiosity it starts with making that list of the things that you are curious about and then rereading that list maybe a couple of times to feel each thing that is on that list that's where the heart comes in that's where the breath is there the brain is there all of these things that you were you're born with um you know muscles and everything else that's 
that's extra that allows us to express ourselves, <laughs> right? Uh, our eyesight as well. But I'm just focusing on the main um, main things that allow us to exist in the way that we want to, because we might we are all more than capable of finding peace and experiencing peace in the midst of total and total chaos. And the reason why I say that is because if one individual in the whole entire world is able to do that, and we can all think of a person, whether we know them or we've seen them on movies or we've heard of, because for certain jobs, for certain careers, you need to be so still and so steady and so calm no matter what. So if one individual can do it, you got to explore what did they do because if they can do it you can do it just need to really want it and master it it's performance versus mastery right do you want to perform and do great or do you want to master it and become a master because one is um for you know for everyone and the other one is more so for yourself and then you get to share it with everyone so um, I'm all about mastery, whether it's the breath. And I used to catch myself not breathing all the time. No wonder my anxiety was, you know, panic attacks <laughs> so often. So once I learned to master my breath, and I'm still learning to master because I'm still not a master of that. Um, the heart, that's where the feeling and emotion is. That's where creation happens. That's where manifestation comes from as well. And connected with the mind, you know. What else was there? Um, so the curiosity list, that is the next conversation now. Um, going over the list, that's where we were, going over the list and feeling what sends out to you the most that you want to try first, okay? Now it will be challenging because it'll be challenging in different ways for everyone, but it's not as challenging as, and as difficult as the brain makes it out to be, I want to remind you that the brain is very black and white, that it goes to the worst case scenario that I'm going to die. And that's where you start to feel like, you know, you're going to die. The anxiety and panic sets in, but you know, that's not true. So, and then the other side of the brain, it goes to the best case scenario. Right. So, Think of that. You you do have a choice to go this way or go this way. Yes or no. Yes or no. It's black and white. That's how our life is. It's a yes or no. It's decision. Uh, there are no maybes because maybe is just a, it's a prolonging. You know, almost agony and and worry and stress. And am I gonna do this? Skip the middle part. Black and white, yes or no. So on this list, um, you're going to feel a certain way. You want to talk about it? it? Let's talk about it, right? That's going to be on one on one. But I want you to just pick two things you want to explore. For some of you, it will be, I can't pick the two because I can't, I don't feel anything. I feel just too much of everything when it comes with everything. Uh, but chances are, there aren't going to be too many of you on here listening that feel that way. Most of you will feel the other way. Just two? I can't pick two. I want to do 10 of them. And I want to do 10 of them right now. And I'm actually being nice, but allowing you to pick two. One is best. Laser focus. That's how we get things done. And we can explore and see if we like it or not. But you'll know pretty quickly if this is for you or not, and then start doing something with it. Whatever that curiosity is, start exploring it. Maybe make a list of what is the first place you want to do or in exploring this. Right, Bethany, what did you do? Um, really, the first thing I did when it came after, or after it, I meditated on it. Um, and I asked myself the questions of, is this gonna, is this really expanding or am I picking this because I just want to pick something? Because that's what, for me, I had trouble picking something. Cause like, like you're saying, you want to do a bunch. It's like, oh, this is exciting. I didn't realize I had this knowledge. 
And then, so it was just like, oh, okay, I got to pick one. So I meditated really before I picked the one, I meditated a little bit. I journaled, wrote it out so I could just see it. And then once I picked, did the same thing, meditated, wrote it out, um, taking the time to kind of just to really check in with myself to see if it's fully aligning. Um, and then I just, I just did it. Um, I didn't ask questions on myself. You know, I, I chose it, so I'm doing it. And it was just one thing at a time. Uh, one example uh, for me was writing. Um, I wrote a poem. I just, I had like, I think it was a coaching assignment where it was like, okay, write a poem or it was a homework I made for myself. That's what it was. And so I ended up writing two poems that day instead of just one. And I noticed how joyous I felt behind it. Um, and I noticed that I felt expanded and just that moment of writing and just like, oh, I let it out. I, I'm uncovering my gift. And another thing recently is dancing. Um, I really just, once I, I just had to start dancing. I just, okay, turned on music and I'm dancing. Um, and now I had that, it sparked that joy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel the same. Like after I write a poem, I feel the same after I do yoga, you know? So it was just like, I just felt so much more empowered and expanded. Um, so yeah, just do it, you know, just yeah. Just do it. And you started with one, essentially, because if I remember correctly, it was the yoga that you started with. It was meditation and then um, a little bit of meditation. And then you went right into yoga. And how many days are you have you been doing yoga now? Uh, two years and 111, uh, 112 days. Yeah. And that's pretty much every day nonstop. Yep. Every day you started uh doing yoga and then that's when you know you wanted to explore the yoga a little bit more but you weren't ready with that um which you know as a coach bravo for recognizing it okay what's next let's go into the next one and you go into the next one and i remember you're like damn that felt good because you started also journaling as well and you started really liking journaling and you still do journaling how many days of journaling now too same like well it's a little maybe a little bit more but no I'm pretty sure it's it's two years and uh, 112 days of journaling yeah. so that's you know one curiosity next curiosity next curiosity because one of them and then you realize that well, you, know, you found some poems from when you were a child and that was like oh that's the curiosity I want to explore now right yeah. and you know me as a coach from I'm sitting from the side I'm like I see you seeing your path and connecting the path and it's like you you wanted something what's next but yoga you're not ready for the next step in the yoga which you are now right and it's been just over a year and you wanted to explore writing and then you know especially then you found i remember you showing the poems as, as, as a child that you've written and you're like this this is it like, this is it. This is a sign. Like, I, I'm i going to do this right now. And you tried, you know, like I said, homework was to do one, you did two. And, and then from that day on, you were doing poems, mm -hmm. right? And uh, how many things were on that curiosity list of yours, if you remember? Man, there was at least 20. I know there was at least 20 different things on it, maybe more. Mm -hmm. um, I had 50 in mine. 50? <laughs> yeah, like 50. And I had to like, and I was one of those people that I got to pick one? No, no, no. So I picked three and I was exhausted. <laughs> and I don't remember what those three things were because it became too much for me. This is why I want you to, I wanted to share the little journeys and little stories and everything. And then now when I picked three of them to do, I was overwhelmed. I don't remember what they were. I know one of them was the things that I still do, which is, you know, the, the live videos, the podcasts, the conversations, all of that. Um, that was one of them that I, that I picked, uh, but I've been already doing it previously. 
I just picked something that I was already doing that I wanted to expand on. And I can't even remember the, what the other ones were, but I remember not wanting to do anything because it was, it was too much to focus and have, you know, living with ADHD, it's difficult already to focus as is. And most of us nowadays are, as I would call it, as ADHD positive. <laughs> because we have so much information coming at us in every direction, every place, we can't, we cannot be ADHD, right? Um, and that's why we're able to hold focus. And that's why it's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. That means that you are a master focuser. <laughs> if there is a word, if not, there is one now. You're a master focuser. That you can focus on one thing for a long period of time one thing for a long period of time curiosity can be a long period of time it can one week can feel like a long period of time i'm not telling you to pick one thing for the year to do or for a month one thing to do for a week and if after a week you still want to continue going with it then continue going with it yoga was for you um um Meditation was another thing. Um, you explored dance a little bit as well. Journaling. Um, there was a couple of other things that you explored. Oh. And, and then, the, you know, your poems. And the, the things that you're passionate about, they will stick. Those that you are not, you will, you will lose focus. You will forget. That's because they're not for you. Don't hold on to them let them go and say, okay, great. Wasn't for me. A line across. Just because a line is across does not mean you can never go back and revisit it if it ever comes up again. Right. I will make that a point as well because the mind does that. Cross stuff, that's it, gone. And then it can create that FOMO. Uh, but remember, if it what's yours, if you release it, it will come back to you. If it's a thought, or if it's an idea, if it's a curiosity that's yours, it will come back to you. You do not need to hold on to the piece of paper no. unless it brings you joy. <laughs> Which are, it might not, but if it brings you joy by you know having the crossed off lines, then you can frame it. Right. Look at it though. A list of accomplishments. No, 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 no. And when one circled, this is it. And now you are living and breathing this gift that you covered that you weren't necessarily born with, but you were born with because the journey was to uncover it and get to this point. Yeah, exactly. So I think that pretty much answers both of the things that we were going to talk about. Yeah, because bringing back with the yoga, I was going to say that's something I was like, I, I got to the point where I was like, well, I think this is just for me. It's just my thing. And so I crossed it off the list of wanting to lead yoga. And then just back in September, the end of September, or no, it was the end of August, I got the idea to do yoga live videos. And now I've been doing them every Wednesday. So it's, it's never, you, it's not like you can't go back, like you're saying. That's always on your list of curiosities. If it was there before and if it's meant to be, it will come back. Yeah, definitely agree with that. And then you can do something about it then. But guess what? Some of us, um, we feel a little bit of guilt when we go back to the uh -huh. that we had. And the guilt comes from a place of, I missed out on all of this time that I could have been pursuing this curiosity and I give up on it. But the thing is, that was also meant to happen because you were meant to go through, you needed a break. Like every relationship, you have a relationship with a curiosity, right? Everything that we have in our life is a relationship, whether it's with a pen or a human being or, I don't know, plants, anything. We do have a relationship with uh, other objects and we also have a relationship with ourselves. And when we, we all need a break once in a while with, with this relationship. So we can come back with a fresh set of eyes, with an expanded mind, with more lessons learned on this journey that guaranteed have 
or will or are helping with this curiosity that you needed to learn certain things because you weren't fully ready to to explore that curiosity in the way that you wanted to, um, that you needed to learn a bunch of lessons so that way you are fully ready to go with it right. and follow it, right? Let's talk about your yoga, Bethany, because that's the best example that comes up for me right now. How was it with the yoga, the journey? Oh, it's been, a, it's been amazing. It's... It, it, it's hard to put like words I guess to express like the words behind it because it just like it's been just so expanding and growing and I've learned so much from it um like physically mentally um I mean and it all just started with me just sitting down and doing a yoga challenge me doing okay here's a 21 day yoga challenge I'm gonna try it out see how it goes and then it stuck I redid the 21 day challenge again because I'm like well, I like that. Let's do it again. I'm going to do this until I master these, these classes, you know, of course I've not, I haven't mastered them probably, but at the same time I have, because I've learned so much knowledge with doing yoga on my, myself, um, or with myself by myself. <laughs> Cause I used to go from just doing, watching people do yoga. Now I am just doing my own flows when I'm like, Oh, I feel like I need to do some yoga. I know the exact poses that are going to help me in that instance. And that's why I like to call my yoga intuitive flow yoga, because it's really like, okay, this is what's going to help me right now. I'm doing these poses. Um, and so it can't like intuition came a part of it too. And it just like each step of the way, I feel like it expanded more and more and more to get me to the point where I am today to where I'm being a, I know I'm being a teacher with yoga, which I, wow, it's just as amazing. <laughs> but see, but also one of the things that I wanted to, you know, remind you as well is that there was a break that, uh, there was, what you're doing with yoga right now, this is something that you wanted to do in the beginning. This is where you, this was your curiosity. You were curious and you wanted to try going live and doing live video and doing uh, yoga lessons, uh, but you weren't ready. So you didn't fully drop the curiosity because part of it was still going because it's the yoga itself, the practice. Mm -hmm. um, and then following the actual curiosity of the video. No, to, with the yoga so even though it's like like a yoga teacher kind of curiosity that it was more around the video part right and and that's where now that you're comfortable with yourself and with videos why not exactly and that's where it came down to why not why, just try it just try it once and see if, it, if you like it if you don't like it you don't have to do it again and yeah I, and you did yeah. try you also I remember tried recording yourself and that curiosity when you did that no nope, yeah nope. you didn't like it you're like no I don't want to do it no 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 right exactly I was like not for me this is like and I remember in um, other podcast episodes, when we were talking with, it was one when we had Megan on um, and yoga came up and it was at that time, I was like, yeah, I, it's, it's, all, it's for me. It's my self-care. I don't really want it. Like, I don't want to teach it because it's my time, you know, but now it's like, yes, I have my time because I do yoga in the morning and I do it before bed. So I have plenty of my time yoga. So then it was like, Ooh, Okay, so I can do both. What? Ah, like you know, it's like aha. Yeah, <laughs> and you need to learn something to get yourself to that point where you're actually able to fully explore your curiosity. And the reason why I wanted to bring this experience up is because you fully understand it, Bethany, right? And those of you that have been listening, especially from the beginning, you would understand as well how you know it's we need time to take that step to the next level right and you tried and that's why when i was saying pick one curiosity try it for a week you've 
for you, you might not need a week. You might need just one day or one minute, one hour to try it. And you're like, nope, not for me. Scratch it off, right? Put a line across it. So then you can go to the next one. But the thing is, it might still come back. And it's your one curiosity can often be attached to another one, right? Yoga with video, which they, you know, essentially they were two in one and and yet they were separate right. you tried then like it and you move on moved on to the next one really quick right. right so i wanted to bring that point home that you can try your curiosity don't like it it's fine not for you or maybe not yet and uh-huh. don't about scratching it off or losing the paper because if it's meant to be yours i'll come back um your heart will your heart never lies that's where your intuition resides as well you feel it in your heart and you just know you just know uh your wisdom is there as well and uh wisdom is a sense of knowing it's not something that we learn because that's knowledge wisdom is something that you just know without even having an exp- an explanation of why you know the things that you know, you just know them. And knowledge can also become wisdom, which basically means that if you expose yourself to a certain experience, a certain knowledge for a long period of time, or long enough for it to just become something that you know, it, it, you understand it on the cellular level, like I like to refer to, that you don't need to sit down and learn it to to get to the point because we can learn and learn and learn and learn and we can be book smart but not what often is referred to as street smart but it's not necessarily street smart it's just you being able to understand and and read your intuition mm-hmm right and listening to that voice that wisdom voice of your higher coach um yeah i think that pretty much summed it up exercise your brain as well which i did mention i wanted to mention that again uh meditation is one of the best exercises so i know bethany was talking about uh that she meditated before picking the curiosity which helped her for those of you that have never meditated start (laughs) <laughs> it's it's simple and yet it doesn't feel simple it feels very scary because the uh the most simplest meditation is something that all of us avoid doing at all costs and that is to sit in silence and that means around you externally and in here internally sitting in silence externally and internally and just being in the moment without Mm -hmm. judging the moment or without trying to change it with your thoughts do it for just one minute start with one minute and that might already be too much for some people but start with what you're comfortable with and then when the chatter starts because it starts really quickly Probably the moment you close your eyes, the chatter can start in the beginning when you're just starting off. But just say to yourself, no mind, right? This is what uh, Dustin talks about in Zen Meditation Days, and it's the the, the monkey chatter. Jay Shetty talks about it as well, uh, that this is the monk approach, no mind, no mind, no mind. Just remind yourself, no mind. It's not that you don't have a mind, you just don't need that mind right now. So you can, you know, you can, you can just be. Because one of the things I help people do is find a balance between doing and being. And being is not just sitting in this monk state for a long time, because I can't do that for very long. I'm not going to come on and say that I do that. I, I can't do that for very long. For me, I can do it for 10 minutes max. And that's a lot because I started with not being able to do a minute. I am one of those people that I'm trying to talk to. <laughs> that I could not sit still or quietly, internally and externally for more than a minute. 
it took me a while to get there. When I say a while, I mean every day for a week, nonstop. That was one of my curiosities. And, um, and that's where you start. You start with just one minute of silence and moving up a little bit until you were able to sit there for much longer. And before you know it, you'll look at the clock or you're in a meditation with Dustin and you hear the little snap, the click. I'm like, what already? I just sat. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you tap right into the uh, the being, right? Mm -hmm. Still with yourself, because there's different times where we can be. We can be with our kids. We can be with ourselves. We can be with people, and still be, um, and not having to do, and then doing, right? So, anyways, but you're in there. You jump right into the deep end, mm-hmm. and it just gets snapped out of it. It's like, oh my god, already. That was really quick. Quick. It felt like I, not even a minute has gone by. Right. And then another thing with meditation, you can always find um, on YouTube. You can look up guided meditations. If because that's what I did. I had trouble, you know, calming the cla- the chatter. So when I first started meditation, it was those guided visual meditations. Those helped me tremendously. But the the no mind. I use it all the time when I meditate because it brings you that state of release. Like it's okay. And then another thing I like to, I like to think is like, if a thought does come up, well, I'm going to go pin it. I'm going to pin it over there. We can come back to it later, but right now, like you're saying, be here right now. Um, And those are little things that help me or just even saying I'm here now. I'm here now. Like I, yeah, I got you can count, you can do mantras. Like there's a lot of different things to help tether, tether your mind to the now. Yeah. But I really am glad you brought up that no mind because it's an amazing tool that I'm grateful that I, I was able to learn. Yeah. And thank you for bringing up the guided meditation on YouTube, because that was the other thing that uh, I know both, both of us did as well. And um, I just went into the no mind part and the meditations are incredible and they are what help me to strengthen my silent meditation exactly. right because i needed to be able to focus on other things aside from self the self-absorbed the conversations and you know the to-do list that's still self-absorbed all the things that are going through that are with myself that I don't need to even see or care or um, to deal with right now because that's going to be later so one of the other practices that I do is when I am, let's say, out and about, whether it's in my house, when I say out and about, it's just going about doing things, you know, just picturing <laughs> out and about, enjoying my life, things are going great. And then all of a sudden, you know, something might happen or a thought comes to mind of, oh my God, I forgot to do this. And, or, oh my God, I need to do this. And it's like the panic sets in, the anxiety comes in. Um, and, and you know, you start to feel discomfort. So the moment I start to feel discomfort is I do take a moment to um, understand what the discomfort is and where it's coming from, which means what is that thought? Or sometimes it might be, what is that feeling or emotion or is it mine? Um, and you know, quiet leg is coaching myself for a second really quickly of you know identifying what it is um so that way i can let it go and then there's sometimes where i feel like i don't need to yeah um or i don't want to and that that's fine which means that i'm not ready to deal with it yet so i don't need to and i don't want to that's fine and then what i do is i go into the no mind no mind no mind reminding myself that i do not need this right now i don't need to deal with this right now this is not happening right now this is just the future um that i when the time comes then i can 
feel this way if I choose to. But it never actually happens that when the time comes, I will feel that same way. It's like this example is we have, we've all studied for exams and tests and a week before the exam, we're already starting to feel the dread, the discomfort, and I don't want to deal with it. And I'm going to fail. And this is going to be, you know, the, the black brain, the I'm going to die, uh, as opposed to the white brain that says, it's going to be great and peachy. And I am going to get 100% because I am the best, right? This is really the brain that really talks to us, unless we train it. Okay, exercise that I was talking about with the brain that can be trained. So we go into the worst case scenario that we're going to die uh, without fully understanding the conversation that's happening, but parents are involved. There's going to be murder happening in the house. There's going to be police involved. There's going to be, you know, everybody's going to lose me. And I, <laughs> you know, that's it. This, this is it. If I fail this, this test, this exam. Um, and we're feeling it that whole time instead of reminding ourselves no mind no mind because if you studied you've done what you need to why worry because it I just mean, brings doubt you know when you worry you're just doubting yourself and you're self-sabotaging by like clouding your brain exactly and then that intuition that you were talking about that clouds the intuition yeah. That clouds the intuition. All of us, believe it or not, all of us are more than capable of if we attend class every single day, whether we are fully paying attention or not, we're able to ace the exam, any exam, if we just trusted our intuition. If we didn't doubt and say, no, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't seem right. Even though it feels right, it doesn't seem right. So we start to question our intuition and we change our answer on the test paper and then we'll look back and say, fuck it, why did I do that? I knew it and yet I question myself. We've all done that. And if we just trust our intuition and remind ourselves, no mind, no mind, no mind, because I don't need to worry about it because I trust myself. I know all of this stuff, whether you said it or not, you know it because you've been exposed to it subconsciously, it's still there. Just because you look outside the window and you're only seeing the bird feeder, me uh doesn't mean that i don't see everything else that's happening the subconscious mind still does it's aware of everything and if something is out of place i will you know and if my mind is you know program programmed of um, seeing everything in place that it's need to be then i'll see it right so this exercise that we can do anytime anywhere and no one will have the slightest idea of what you're doing. And not only are you exercising your and strengthening your brain and your mind and your sense of control and discipline and focus and everything under the umbrella by simply shifting the state that you're in and you don't want to be in, that you don't need to be in, the state of what if, well, that's where it's coming from, the what if, what if the saber tooth tiger is out there? Well, right now you're going to sleep. You don't need to worry about it. Let somebody else worry about it, right? So by simply reminding yourself, no mind, no mind, no mind, or I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. And I use those two depending on what it is. One, if it's too much planning going on, too much going on that's taking me away from what I'm doing and it's not benefiting me. Because for example, when there's a lot of planning and a lot of ideas going on and I have my notebook and I'm able to write things down, then yeah, great. I'll utilize that. Otherwise, no mind, no mind, no mind because I don't need to worry about it. When I'm feeling a certain way and I don't want to deal with it, I'm safe. I'm safe, I'm safe. Or I take the time to uncover what it is and then I question it and I don't even have to tell myself that I'm safe because I realize how ridiculous this insane thought was of me getting murdered by my parents because I fail my exam or fail my test. Right, yeah. Uh, this is just the extreme examples of the reality of our minds, how it operates, how it's, I'm going to die, that's it. And we sometimes we picture in the worst case scenario, 
of course, I never pictured it in the way that I explained it, but I'm just saying, you know, the brain, that's probably, maybe that's where it went because I never actually explored and dug really deep of where my brain really went when my, I was responsible for good marks because my parents were watching. And we do perform better when there's somebody else there that keeps us accountable for our actions. And when we don't have that person, we don't do anything, we feel like a failure and we want that person and we don't want that person. How do we become that person ourselves? Right? A lot of mumbo jumbo in there, but at the same time, <laughs> there's like um uh, oh there's a lot of gold in there though like because with your saying with the no mind no mind no mind I do that and like it depends on how I'm feeling or what I'm feeling because there's times where I'll say to myself like um hamsa that's a mantra for release um or I'll just say I'm here now um oh no and the hamsa is also the I am here now um and it's like in different, different, um, it's, I believe it's Sanskrit. So sometimes it's not. Okay. Yeah. So it's not everyone's like forte. It's not everyone, but even saying to yourself, I am here now. I find that helps me a lot too. Um, and also with the no mind one. Last week, right? Last I, week in the group, we were talking about the I am. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And those affirmations come into play because I will be like, oh, if I'm feeling worried, okay, well, I'm I'm here right now. And what else am I? What am I like? What's going on? And sometimes going out in nature, that's another thing that like really helps is to just go out and look at the beauty. See, it's really cool right now in my, in my yard um, because the fall time, but if you look out, there's a color for each chakra in the leaves. I have yellow, orange, red, there's green, there's purple, and a blue sky. So I have all these reminders when I go outside of like these different things for my chakras, because each chakra means something different. So if I'm not feeling safe, I see the red, the red, you know, leaf, and I'm like, oh, but I am safe, or, you know, like, if I'm feeling down on myself, I see the orange, and I'm like, but I'm creative, and I'm, I'm powerful, you know, or the yellow, I'm strong, like, yes, I got this, or the green for, oh, I'm loved, like, and there is so much love, um, you know, all that good stuff, but uh, it's just, nature and like just bringing yourself back to that tether like you were saying with the no mind that bring yourself back to right here right now because you can worry all you want and you're putting that focus on that worry but what if you put that focus on stuff that are going to empower you because that worrying and you've taught, said this before that worrying is showing you that you have some amazing focusing skills just shift that focus to where you want it to be and something that's going to expand you. And that's with like the no mind, the meditation, the breath, the self-assessment, you know, it's just ah, bring yourself back. Yeah. We can become very, very easily and quickly obsessed over a negative thought or idea or an experience but when it comes to the positive ones we don't get as obsessed because they tend to come with guilt guilt of being better than your friends being better than your family or they might see you as better or they might see you as a threat the relationship or dynamic of relationships changing so that's why we are less likely to succeed because we have been trained and programmed to think of somebody else and make sure that we are a good girl and that we don't hurt people intentionally, which basically means once you, you become aware of what you say and what you do online affects people and how it could possibly affect them the different ways and especially if you are a people pleaser you might find yourself in a place where you're scared to show up and contribute to the online world because you might step on someone's toes one way or another 
So hence you uh, continue to play small and not show up for the people that need you. And most importantly, for the person that will benefit the most from that growth, and that is yourself. Right? So, and that journey is very purposeful as well. Whatever journey each and every one of you is on, because we're all on the journey. Every single human being is on the journey. Even if that journey is sitting in front of a TV and watching TV 24 seven and only getting up to go to the bathroom and to get food, that is still a journey. Where that journey leads you is completely up to you and up to you paying attention to the signs that are trying to tell you when it's time to do something else or whether the journey is, you know, becoming the president. Right, exactly. Everyone is on a journey. And even mm-hmm. the president, just because you become a person does not mean the journey ends. The journey ends and starts with one thing, and that is your breath. Mm-hmm. And I want to remind everyone that breath is the key to unlocking everything, including your unlimited potential. That you need to get your breath under control. And that starts with understanding your breath by paying attention to it throughout the day. That, do you think that could be your curiosity for the next week? Definitely. That's an amazing curiosity. If there was, if you're just to pick one, your breath, cause you can co- cover so much by just focusing on your breath. Like that's where your balance and alignment alignment is, where you're grounding, you're centering. You know, when you want to feel that peace and harmony, hey, it's your breath. So I think that's an amazing way to, amazing place to start. Yeah, I agree. And if you have any questions about it, you can either message us, so we'll share what we know, or you can do some research yourself. That's how we also expand on our curiosities because I have limited knowledge. Bethany has limited knowledge, similar and yet different. You listen to somebody else's video, they'll have different knowledge. Somebody else will have different knowledge. And, and then in the end, you put all these puzzle pieces together and you create something of your own for yourself. And it really does start with sitting still and paying attention to yourself and to your body, maybe listening to your pulse good one to remind you hey i'm here now i'm alive i'm breathing yeah so. i never feel my purse on my wrist so if you're one of those and you start to panic oh my god i can't feel a purse pulse go to your neck you'll always feel it there if you push it there um and sometimes uh, you know i remember when i started that practice of feeling my pulse i could not find the pulse for the life of me even listening to it here and i will start to panic and i could feel my pulse but I in my head and everywhere but I can't feel under my fingers I'm like oh my god my fingers don't work (laughs) right but because I was focusing on the negative by me focusing on negative I get to experience a negative and it expands and becomes worse and worse and worse but then I'm like no wait a minute my fingers are fine I have a pulse I can't not have a pulse and you know be in this panic state so let's find it Try a different way and try both. I'm like, oh, there it is. It's like, if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. Um, And when it comes to, you know, exploring your breath, pay attention to, take notes, start journaling. Um, For one week, any shift in your breath, any change in your breath, Explore it. Where is it coming from? What's causing it? Um, why are you clear on the thought? What emotion are you feeling, experiencing? And then that doesn't take very long. That takes like maybe a minute. And then, okay, don't like this. What do I want instead? And then on this one, you can focus for much longer. You can focus on for as long as you want. And, but I, I, the, the reason for this is I want you to understand the changes of breath and I want you to be able to notice them because you got to start noticing the changes before you can do something about it and understanding them before you can fully do something about it. 
to notice a change, acknowledge it, validate it, work through it if you want to. And if not, then just, okay, what do I want to send? I don't want this, right? I don't want to worry about it. I don't want to think about it. I want to think and worry about this and the things that I actually want. And whatever it is, focus on that for as long as you're able to and, and magnify it. Like you start looking at it, the way that we start looking at any kind of situation that is uh, uncomfortable is through a tiny little magnifying glass, that little light that shoots through the magnifying glass through <laughs> the sun, right? So this is how we focus on this and, and we feel that, that jolt. But I want you to, um, I think you move in the magnifying glass and it expands, it gets bigger. So I want you to move in that magnifying glass and expand it until it's like really close, I guess. Or another um, visual effect of you're looking at this magnifying glass or just looking at this one light thought and you can expand it by you know by flying away from it and seeing the bigger picture so the same thing is going to happen and, and that little speck of light will be so much smaller when we focus on the positive and it's much bigger when we focus on the negative so by expanding on the positive and just every time you can add to this visual picture that you have just add one new thing, maybe a new color, maybe a new experience, maybe a new thought, and just continue expanding on this visual reminder for yourself, right? Visual in the mind, or if you want to take it up a notch or two, do a vision board. Yeah. Right. So that's, I think, pretty much everything that I can think of under the umbrella of gifts. I know there's a lot more to it and we can expand more, but this is just the, the basics all in one, starting from the brain, the heart, um, the breath, and everything that is connected to each and every gift that you were born with and then expand it upon. It's like layer upon layer. It's like um, if you've ever seen how in the really big companies, how the network works, we start with the, the big person and then the next one and next one, and just each one expands more and more and more, especially if it's a really big company, it just seems to keep going and going and going down, down that list until you have like so many. That's kind of like how all of these gifts that we were born with are. Yeah. We are unlimited. And it continues to expand the more you pay attention to it. So the more you pay attention to the negative thought, that will expand. The more you pay attention to the positive, that will expand. The more you focus on your curiosity, that will expand. The more you focus on learning about your breath, that will expand. And that's why one focus is best. But if you want to give yourself a challenge, do two. But one is going to be more than enough of a challenge. So curiosity list, pick one thing. And go with it and then you can you can add to it right if one is not enough next day or a couple of days later you can add another one you never know yeah you can always go back and add more if some new curiosities come to mind write it down like it's never too late to add more to your list like we we have this journey of life and it's just full of experiences and opportunities and why hinder yourself to only a few when you can expand outwardly and try multiple things like but like you said, it's good to start with one so you don't overwhelm yourself because overwhelm brings burnout. And then burnout brings where to your point of not wanting to do anything. And you just, well, no, this is too hard. And you shut down. But by focusing by that one little thing, you're, you're allowing your mind to be more open to it, I feel like as well. Like you're, you're having that awareness and, and you, yeah. And just... You bring a spotlight to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, yes. You bring the spotlight to it. And it's not overwhelming because it's one thing. Yeah, exactly. It's just one thing, one spotlight to one capacity. And you keep exploring, right? Um, this is the spotlight that I got. I want to share. Oh, it's, yeah. 
Tiny That's little cool. light, so it's really bright. Watch your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and the the colors they actually changed. So I changed this one. It was this was a, a different one originally. It was more orangey. This one is more unicorny. Like I said, the the two different shades. And um, yeah, yeah. I like lights. I don't know if you guys can tell. Twinkly lights here. I have my diva light on. I have this light on. I want more lights. I love, to me, it's like, it just reminds me of my childhood being out in the dark forest. Don't ask questions. <laughs> uh, I love humor. Um, nothing major. Being out in the dark forest and seeing those light bugs. Oh, yes, the light bugs. Are. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, so that's what, like this reminds me of the stars, the starry night, yeah. and the light bugs. And it's just like, it's it's the atmosphere, it's the ambience, mm -hmm. it's the feeling. And to me, when I saw this light, I was looking at it and looking at it. I put it down. I'm like looking at it, looking at it. I'm like, why do I keep looking at it? Something about it just feels magical. And that's why I got it. And it was the last one. Yeah. I was like, okay. I'm going to have, because I like lights. I'm going to have more. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It adds more to the background, too, as well. You know? Yeah. Add that more illumination. Illuminate, you know? <laughs> and it hides the, <laughs> the, sh the shitty wall behind there. Because this is like plywood uh, wallpaper type of stuff that has been here since the 1900s because this house this basement has not been updated since it was built uh someone is wanting to be in a spotlight yeah hi ramsey yeah he wanted to say hello but, <laughs> but anyways um closing thoughts um i have a poem that i would like to share um so i shared this one sunday um but it aligns so well with our topic. Um, so here I go. Sharpen your awareness with all the wisdom within and around you. This will bring growth to your being. And for that, I'm extremely happy and grateful. Mm. I love that. The word that stood out to me the most is growth. Yeah. I find that sometimes I hear poems and there's just, one word or a couple of words that really stand out that is the root of everything else that's around it and the way that i heard it is that all of your experiences cause you to grow and the way that i understand it is that we have a choice to grow or not to grow. Yeah, exactly. The choice is yours. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to expand or are you going to drain yourself? Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't have to be drastic. Again, your curiosity list. One thing on there. If you wanted to be drastic, you'd be picking three things. And that was me. And I'll tell you, like I already told you, it wasn't, it, it was fun and I, it was great and I learned a lot, but I didn't stick to, to them. Even the yeah. video, stick to. I ended up taking a break from videos for almost a year. And uh, I didn't like that because I really enjoy doing videos. And uh, yeah. so that's, yeah. that's what I heard from that poem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I, I love hearing people's interpretations of what I write because it's different for everyone. You're going to, like you said, you're going to each, so everyone different is going to pick up on a, pick up on a word with what you're going through at the moment or like how you're feeling, you know, so it's really cool to hear that. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Welcome. And I'm curious to hear what inspired you to write it? Uh, what inspired me to write it was um, that day for water activation. It was my crown chakra. Um, and each day I, so I have a list of my values. I write down every day. This is my, this is what I'm striving for. This is who I am, my values. And I will pick three things out of my value 
as it coincides with that chakra for the day or which is how I'm feeling or what I'm desiring. So what came up for that day, it was awareness, wisdom, and gratitude. And then that's where everything else kind of flows afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it was self-awareness and realization moment is what I hear. Um, Deeper awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, sharpen like your, yeah, exactly what you said, your, your inner, your higher self, you know, or sharpen that, that, that intuition that you have already and your inner awareness and you, and be with that wisdom that you have already within and that will bring growth. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I love that. And I love how you keep track of how each basically the story behind each poem right and and remembering what you were experiencing or going through when you wrote that poem right when you did that and I'm just trying to think like that approach is really I think what we were talking about as well is like becoming aware of um of everything and and doing it. Yeah. Um, Going after those curiosities and doing it, finding your gifts. Become the powerful warrior unicorn that you can be, that you are. <laughs> that's right. And reminding yourself that you're a goddamn unicorn. Yeah. Just practice saying it once in a while to yourself. I'm a goddamn unicorn. No one can bring me down because nobody knows me and nobody will ever know me no matter how much they try it's sad in a way but at the same time it's powerful because your job is to help people to really understand themselves more by being around you by then trying to understand you they really understand themselves more yeah Right, and we all to do the same by going through all the experiences, all the interactions, as if we are from an approach of like, what's in it for me, but not in a selfish way, not in a negative selfish way, because at the end of the day. You know, selfish is not a bad thing and we are all selfish. We need to be selfish in order for us to be our best version of of ourselves. We need to, right? We need to put ourselves first. We need to make sure that we are fed before we go and feed our children. Um, As, you know, as some mothers will say, oh my God, that's horrible. I could never do that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you are a good mother either. In my opinion, a good mother or also in my experience, because I've, I've done both, where I put my kids first and then I've learned to put myself first. And in my experience and observing and seeing my kids as the evidence of what works and what doesn't for me, right? And I want to emphasize that this worked for me, not for everyone. By, you know, stepping back a little bit, giving them more reins, more trust, they're, you know, not spoon feeding them. They're more than capable of, taking care of themselves and which gives me more time for myself and by me um like also thinking of my my good days and my bad days we all have them no matter how perfect we might come across we all have them my bad days my fuse is very short my good days i have no fuse okay the extreme black and white again and when it is a bad day, it doesn't benefit anyone, and especially me. And by paying attention to my bad days or what could have caused it, it's unhealthy habits. Really. Um, when it comes to 
sleep, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to water, when it comes to Halloween candy, um, guilty, especially right now, right? When it comes to exercise, when it comes to me taking care of myself, when it comes to me showering or not showering, washing my hair or not washing my hair, when I am taken care of, I feel great. I have no food and anything that, that happens, I, I can, I'm in control, basically. That's the way that I would describe it, that I am unshakable and I'm unbreakable. And when I don't, when I haven't taken care of myself, I am, you know, looking at how I would react as opposed to respond. I'm not a great mother, but at the same time, all of these things happen for a reason, which means that this reason was not only for me, it was for that individual that was, was so lucky to be on the, on the receiving end of this interaction, that they need to learn something and I need to learn something, right? And that can benefit both of us in the future. Which means that if you feel like you're fucking up your kids, there's nothing wrong with that. And that just means that you are aware that you are perhaps maybe crossing the line somewhere. And to take notes for yourself on where that is and what you can do about it. And then start that change. Okay? And for most of us, it will be... I need that five minutes in the morning for myself before I hear my screaming kids yeah. or before bed, right? Um, so if that's what you need, have it, take it, start it, do it. You deserve it. Definitely. Right? Um, and don't worry about messing up your kids too much worry about it but not too much right because worry means that you actually want to do something about it. but if you completely not worry and you continue going on that same journey then nothing changes and things will stay the same and the same amount of damage can continue to get you know, put on or whatever we want to call it with uh, onto our kids and we don't want that and i'm sure you don't want that and if you don't want that then you do have choices and you can go about a different way now this this conversation is nothing to do, <laughs> to do with what we're talking about because again in there that will be breath will be part of that your heart will be part of that because you'll feel that in there your head will be part of that your intuition your wisdom everything will be part of that so at the end of the day this conversation is still part of that uh, and maybe the reason why is because this might some be something that you're curious about curious about how to eliminate anger out of your life when it comes to dealing with your kids Curious about how do I take care of myself? How do I put myself first when all I know is how to put everybody else first, especially my kids? Because that is really hard to do for mothers. Definitely. And something I learned was you can't give from an empty cup. Like there's nothing to give. But if you fill your cup up, you have so much more to give, so much love to give. And your fuse, there's no fuse really. Sure, I have my times where like I'll get a fuse in there. But it's a lot different than where it was, where in the past, before I did self-care and like took care of myself, filled my cup up, I would come at a place of anger. Oh, this would happen. Instant anger, instant yelling. Resist. But now, yeah, yeah. And there's resentment. And now I'm like, okay, well, my cup's filled. I filled my cup up and I have that breath like you're saying. And I remember my higher self, my that inner coach comes up and it's like, hey, remember? And of course you're gonna have your inner critic, you're gonna have your ego come out too, but having the balance with it all and it all starts with your breath and really finding that time for yourself because we all have it. If it means waking up five, five minutes earlier than what you usually do, so you can make sure you have that time, do it. If you stay up an extra five minutes just so you have that time, do that as well because over time you start to sharpen it and it'll just come natural. You'll find those little moments in the during the day where it's like, oh, I got five minutes. Cool, I'm gonna fill my cup up real quick. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 
and a feeling itself will become uh, big enough of a reward. Yeah. Because in the beginning, it might be, it might not feel like it, or it might be the uh -huh. other way where you feel the reward by following through what you want it, and then all of a sudden it dwindles away, and you no longer feel that uh, that just by completing this, whatever this is, that it's a reward enough on its own, right? I'll use an example from my experience where waking up in the morning, I used to wake up at 5.30 in the morning um, and spend the time for myself, it came to a point where it didn't feel rewarding in, anymore. It almost felt like a punishment in a way that I would much rather prefer to stay up late then wake up early because I was trying to change myself in a way that I wasn't even built. Yeah. Right? So you got to go with the clock that you are already operating on. If you're a morning person, you're a morning person. If you're a night person, you're a night person. Changing that um, can disrupt the whole thing. It's not that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Very many people have, and that's uh, why I wanted to do that. I wanted to change myself. And one day, I, I I feel like if I'm meant to be that person, I will become that person. It will happen naturally. But for me, there was resistance coming up, and and I've had to learn to let go of my attachment to you know this vision that I had. For the morning because it was this beautiful vision that I had of how my mornings would go and you know after six months of trying it didn't happen took a break another three months of trying didn't happen and I said well why am I trying to you know climb down the ladder with my head first Right, it's it's really hard to do. So that's how it felt like I was trying to climb down the ladder when I have no upper body strength. I can't walk myself on my arms. That's what I, I was trying to do. It was great in the beginning, and I was there was a lot of fire and everything. But then that dwindles down, and that is when you get to see if that curiosity of yours is actually your passion or not. So that was one of my curiosities. It was fun exploring it. It was great, but I do prefer to stay up at night. I have a lot more energy. And I mean, based on the books, the book that I read, it makes perfect sense, <laughs> but I should be sleeping at that time, so. <laughs> hey, I'm the same way. I would I like staying up late and sleeping in a little bit. And I tried to wear, like I go to bed early and I wake up early and yeah, you know, I had that fire at first. I'm like, yeah, this is great. I love this. But then it, like you said, it started to become like a chore. Like it was like, like a punishment. Like, oh, I have to get up early again. Like, oh, I just want to sleep in, you know, I want to stay up late. And so I like, I just went, you know, I tried the curiosity wasn't necessarily for me. So my thing is like, I go to bed when I'm absolutely tired. I wake up when I'm rested and I'm grateful that I have a lifestyle where I can do that. Cause there's some people that can't do that because of their work schedule. Like you have a work schedule, so you have to stick with it. So you kind of have to go around that too. But for me, like I'm, I'm pretty being a stay at home mom, I'm able to make my own schedule. And so I've made that for myself, but it all came from me trying my curiosities, figuring out like, no, that wasn't for me. And it's okay. It wasn't for me. But hey, at least you tried. At least you went and you did something. Yeah. And you weren't afraid to fail. Fear yeah. that, you have, that didn't stop you. You tried. Yeah. Because yeah. failure shows you lessons. Shows yeah. you what, why, and you can explore it to why didn't that work? Like, figure it out. Oh, well, this is why. It's not how I'm built. <laughs> it's yeah. not like my, uh, can't think of the word um my makeup you know the makeup of your body that's blueprint, just not yeah. yeah the blueprint that's just not how it is and it, it's okay and it's good to accept yourself for who you are as well exactly and there was something you said that I'm like um I wanted to expand on a tiny bit and, and then it, 
<laughs> went away. Um, anyways, I guess it doesn't matter. Was it wasn't meant to be? Maybe it's the next next video. Maybe we'll come to you. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, anyways, other than that, I think we have gone a little bit past our time because typically we do like to uh, do the video for about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes tops. But this topic is, um, is a really hot topic and dove in pretty deep and yet this is still just on the surface. Right. Yeah. Because you can go deeper. Definitely. Exactly. Everyone that wants to do something about it will have something that they want to go into deeper based on, you know, what awareness that they have gained, what curiosity they have gained, and continue to go, you know, exploring it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the whole phrase, each their own. Right? Yeah. You, you do you, I do me, you do your curiosities, I do mine, and they might be similar. Uh, they might even come across and sound exactly the same, but they will be different. Even if we did the same exact thing, we will have different experiences. Uh, we would learn different lessons. It would still be very different. Yeah, because we're all a part of our own journey and it's all different. And that's that's the beautiful thing about life is none of our journeys are going to be the same. They're all different. And that's how we can learn from each other is by looking at each other's different experiences, because that's something you didn't necessarily go through. So you can learn from that person's experience because they went, went through it. And it gives you more insight and expands your wisdom, your knowledge and your growth and all that good stuff. Exactly. And we can grow on our own. I mean, we can, don't get me wrong. But people in our life, they help us grow so much more by pushing our buttons. And <laughs> a lot of stuff in us that we then can say, oh, I didn't know this was here. Thanks. I can now deal with it. And if it's a really bad button, you know, disconnect it so that way it doesn't go off anymore. Uh, chances are it doesn't benefit anyone, right? Um, anger never really benefited anyone. Nothing good happened in the midst of anger, as far as I know, okay? Um, so the one thing that I forgot that I would, you know came to mind is when you were talking about failure, is that it's only failure when we quit, Yes, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Because if we continue going, and here's the thing, there's a different, uh, there's a, a difference between I quit and I don't want to deal with it, or I quit, I, I got enough of this. I'm good, thanks, I quit, right? Or quit, I can't do it no more. So when you quit from a place and I can't do it, that's the quit that I believe that is attached to failure. But if you quit because you've explored enough and there's, you know, curiosity you explored it explored it and it's like and eh, not for me like the you know my 5 30 a.m waking up eh, it's not for me um i quit it yeah Did i fail no because i got to learn a lot what i needed and later on if it comes back and if i want to try again I'll try again, but for now, I'm good. I like to go to sleep when I feel like it, like you, and I like to wake up when I feel like it, when, you know, my body and my mind is ready because, you know, I also went from waking up in the morning and instantly having a list run in my mind and it was for everything and anything to now waking up in the morning and not having a list. And it's just the one thing, the one thing that I need to do and that's it, right? What is the most important for me right now, okay? And then because if I sit here and I say, okay, I have a 10 o'clock call and I have an 11 o'clock and I have a 12 and I have a one o'clock and I have this and that, and it's like, oh my God, I, I, I don't have anything. Right? Because this is not 
doesn't feel like it's for me, even though it is. It feels like I'm doing everything else and I don't want to do it. And then I don't want to wake up. I will dread waking up because I have to do all of these things. And when I just wake up, I'm doing this one thing. Right now, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go glass of, get a, a glass of water. Right? Whether I want to whisper into it, I'll decide when I get there. Exactly. Yeah, that's like me. It's that self-care in the morning. That's the first thing. Self-care. Nothing else matters after. But, but after, well, of course, other things matter. But, you know, in that moment, like that self-care is the thing to do. And it's just been really empowering to be that way. Because I, I had stuff in my head like, oh, well, today, okay, today's Wednesday. I got to do this, 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 this. And then you get overwhelmed like, oh, gosh, there's so much to do. Like, oh, what am I going to, like, how am I going to handle this? But when you're focusing on yourself, getting that self-care in to fill your cup up, yes, you slept. So that self-care is just going to fill you up a little more, you know, and just a little bit more, top it off. And then you can handle your to-do list. You can handle whatever you got to do after that point. Yeah. Or use a no mind, no mind, no mind. Or I'm yeah. safe. In the mornings when my list would pop up into my mind, I would say no mind, no mind, no, 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 thank you. No, no, no mind. <laughs> yeah, and my affirmations and I am statements come in because then I'm not thinking about anything else I'm just thinking about the affirmations the yeah. who I am as a person yeah and then and, and that's where it comes to for the uh, for me that's where it also came to as well where it started with no mind no mind no mind you need to shut that program down okay Shh. yeah it'll still be running there in the background but it can be muted and and slowly switching to one you know no mind no mind no mind and then i am this i am that my affirmations i like to do the i am statements and i remind myself of who i am and who i want to be who i desire to be um and and yeah and then they just wake up in the morning and it's just the statements on their own you know changing the record um initially you gotta physically get up lift up you remember those really old record players when they use the spiral i do i remember screwing around with them as well um yeah. <laughs> it's like you gotta physically get up lift up this you know the, the sound uh, part of the machine lift up the uh, what is it called I forgot the pl the record player. Lift up the record player, put it away. Okay, mm -hmm. also don't want to scratch that up either. Mm -hmm. And put the new one on, and put the thing down, and then you know let it start playing. You gotta start from the beginning, changing the record player, and it will come to a point where that record would already be in a record player, and you no longer have to change it anymore. Mm -hmm. And you look forward to it, you know, that's something like you're looking forward to waking up because I look forward to waking up every morning to do that little bit of time of those affirmations. I am statements, you know, just that self care. I'm so excited for the morning and before it'd be like, oh, I just want to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And also those I am affirmation statements, they too can become like a dreadful thing that I have to do. If it started feeling like that, and you know it's beneficial, question it, right? Where is this coming from? What are you, what are you trying to avoid? And I like to ask that question because the response typically is I'm trying to avoid feeling good because I don't believe I deserve to feel good or I'm not ready. I'm not ready to feel good all the time. Okay? So if that is what you're hearing, why not? Why do you not believe that you are deserving? If not you, then who would you suggest? Who would you give your feel good to vibes and energy to? If you don't want it, somebody else wants it. So who do you want to give it to? And you want to give it to them? Go ahead, give it to them. But chances are the child will come through and say, no, it's mine. I want it. They have their own. They don't need mine. They need to deal with their own 
their own stuff, their own toys. This is mine, right? So if that's the case, then that means that you do actually believe you deserve it on a subconscious level. Take your power. Yeah. yeah, take your power back, exactly. Consciously, become aware of it. You might have to do it a couple of times or once might be enough for you. And you'll take your power back, like Bethany said, and it'll be yours forevermore. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. Long enough. <laughs> hopefully this was helpful to each and every one of you um i i guess the reason why it was longer is because we were live on the public facebook page of mine ours because it'll be on your page as well i gotta double check the tag and that's uh, why in the group we do keep it shorter we i don't know when we'll be coming on live in the public on the public page because we'd like to keep it in the group so it's more you want it you gotta be part of it <laughs> right um other than that until next wednesday i don't have a particular topic in mind right now but i'm pretty sure we'll come up with something definitely well thank you so much i had a blast and as everyone saw that when we get together we just we just go because it just comes natural it's a beautiful thing and i love it so thank you so much and yeah. i appreciate you know, and I hope you and everyone has a fabulous, blessed day. Yes, thank you. And it's very true. When we get uh -huh. together, we just start to flow and lose track of time. We can talk for hours. We can take a whole entire day and talk. There's always so much. So if you watch this far, give us a wave and say, I watch until the end. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see. I like to see how many of you actually watch from beginning to the very end, and your biggest takeaway. Right, your biggest takeaway might be your one curiosity that you want to start and following, right? Or might maybe you took me up on that challenge, that offer of breath being your first uh, curiosity you want to follow and explore and strengthen, and because that's something you will continue to practice. You, you, can't, you can't just quit. Because once you become aware of your breath, there's no going back. <laughs> and that's a good thing, right? There's no going back and it's a good thing because then you're like, okay, I got this. I got this breath thing down. After how many years? Right, it's like with, yeah, and all the lights behind you. It's like, you see the light. You know, you see that light that, that's shining through and you're like, oh, I like that. I want more of it. Give me more. Yes. You know, you get that fire. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much. Until next Wednesday, much love to each and every one of you, and especially to you, Bethany. Until next week. Bye. Bye.